So we're looking at chapter 2, section 2, and that's combined inequalities in this lesson. So we're going to continue on with our knowledge of inequalities, and we're going to have two or more inequalities joined together. Kind of like in the English languages, we have two sentences joined by the word and. If you asked your English teacher something about that, like, um, you know, today's Friday, so I'm going to go home and take it easy. That and is joining two sentences together. I'm going to go home. I'm going to take it easy. We put them together. Your English teacher will even call it a conjunction. And in math, we also call it a conjunction. And in this case, the two sentences are true. The word and has a special meaning in math. It's like the intersection of two sets. A conjunction is true only when both parts are true. Now, in English, we also have sentences joined by the word or. If I go home tonight and my wife asks me what I'd like for supper, and I'd say, oh, I'd like steak or pizza. She's not going to make a steak, cut it up, and put it on top of a pizza. That would be and. Either one is okay. I'd like steak. I'd like pizza. Either one. Doesn't matter. In English, I don't think we give it a name, but in math, we call it a disjunction. Okay? Now, oh, there's a typo. Better fix it right now while I'm speaking about it. So let's fix that typo. It should say a disjunction is true. So let me fix that while we're at it. A disjunction is true when at least one of the sentences is true. So we've got the conjunction. Both sentences have to be true. We have the disjunction. One of them has to be true. So again, the example I gave, if I said to my wife, you know, I'd like steak or pizza, if she made either one, that would be fine with me. One of them's true. That's fine. So what we want to do is start graphing some of these. And when we graph, we're going to start out with a very simple one, so simple that there's nothing to solve. Each portion is already solved. x is greater than or equal to negative 3. And x is less than positive 2. We're going to graph each one separately and then try to put our results together. Because without graphing, sometimes we don't get the correct answer for these compound sentences, compound inequalities. So I've color-coded them blue and red to make them easier to follow. And rather than making three separate number lines, I sometimes do a little shorthand where I draw one of them above the number line, the other one below the number line, and my final resulting answer on the number line itself. So as I look at the statement x is greater than or equal to negative 3, there's an equal sign. So that means on negative 3, I want to put in a closed circle at negative 3. Where do I find numbers larger than negative 3? Well, that's to the right on the number line. So that's graphing x greater than or equal to negative 3. For the red one now, x less than positive 2. At positive 2, I put an open circle, not a closed one, because there's no equal sign. Where do I find numbers smaller than 2? Well, that's to the left on the number line. The word and means the intersection of those two sets. It means where those two graphs overlap. What do they have in common? So let's start looking at it. Do both graphs have everything smaller than negative 3 in common? No, just one of them does. Do both of them have negative 3 in common? Yeah. Do both of them have everything between negative 3 up to positive 2 in common? Yeah. Do both of them have positive 2 in common? No. Do both of them have larger than positive 2 in common? No. So my final result is there's a closed circle at negative 3 because they both have them in common. There's an open circle at positive 2 because they both don't have them. But everything in between they have in common. And so everything in between is included. And so think of the word intersection like you would uh, if you were driving a car. We have the intersection of Foothill and, uh, I don't know, Gould. The part that's actually the intersection is where the two streets overlap. What they have in common. The points common to both streets. That's what we call the intersection. Same thing here for graphing and in math. All right, let's look at another one. This actually is shorthand notation for something similar to example one. Example one is an and sentence, a conjunction. Example two is a conjunction, just written in shorthand. Remember that game we used to play when we were kids, monkey in the middle? 
Think of this kind of like monkey in the middle. This is shorthand. There are two sentences in one. Two compound, there's two sentences to make this compound inequality. How do you find them? Well, let's look at this. If you cover over one of the inequality signs, that gives you one of the inequality statements. Negative 3 is less than 2x plus 5. That's one of the two compound sentences. To find the other one, and by the way, it's and when we have some shorthand for it. To find the other one, you're going to cover over the other inequality, and you've got 2x plus 5 is less than 7. Now, here's my little saying to help you remember this. There is not a shorthand for or, the shorthand notation. So if you see the shorthand notation with something of x in between two inequalities, only and has shorthand. So if you see this little shorthand notation, it must be an and statement. All right, what we're going to do is solve each one separately, and then at the end, we're going to take the intersection of those two. So let's try to get x by itself. Let's subtract 5 from both sides of the inequality. Negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. I'm going to divide both sides by positive 2. Dividing by positive does not affect the order of my inequality. So negative 4 is less than x. But I bet most of you like to see the variable on the left side, so let's flip it around. x is greater than negative 4. When you flip it around, be careful, and you're elementary school teacher may have helped you remember that this was like an alligator and he was hungry so he was eating the biggest number so if the alligator's eating the x when you flip it around that alligator better still be eating the x so this blue inequality simplifies to x is greater than negative four let's look at the red inequality subtract five from both sides two x is less than two divide by positive two we're not changing the direction of the inequality because dividing by positive x is less than 1. And it's an AND sentence. I want to take the intersection of those two sets. And I would like to put it back in its shorthand notation. So listen carefully how to put it in its shorthand notation. When you have AND, put x in the middle. Point both inequalities so they're pointing to the left. Pointing to the left. If you do that, then the smaller number can go on the left, and the larger number can go on the right, just like you would find larger numbers on the right of a number line and smaller numbers on the left. It does not always work, so you need to check it. So let's check it to see if it's true. This says x is less than 1. That says x is less than 1. That's true. This says x is greater than negative 4. That says x is greater than negative 4. So in this case, it actually worked. It doesn't work in every case. So once you put it in the shorthand, you need to check it. One thing I like about the shorthand is it's easy to graph if you have it in the shorthand. If you have it in the shorthand, you basically have everything you need. You put an open circle around 1, put an open circle around negative 4, and you'll shade everything in between. So an open circle around positive 1, an open circle around negative 4, X is in the middle, so you want all the points in between those. So instead of having to do this, draw the blue one separately above the graph, draw the red one separately below the graph, find out where they overlap. If it's an AND sentence and you put it in shorthand and the shorthand works, makes it real easy to just take it straight from the shorthand to the graph. Now, one other comment. I know some of you, your Algebra 1 teachers, may have told you not to separate this into two inequalities, but just to solve it like this. My recommendation to you, because I've been teaching this for 20, I don't know, 25 years, I guess, of Algebra 2. I've seen more students get it wrong when they do not separate it into two separate inequalities than I have seen students who have separated. You hardly get it wrong when you separate it into the two. So please, separate it into the two inequalities, solve each one separately, then put it back together at the end. I want your grade to be as high as it possibly can be. Now, you can't miss it, this junction. You can't miss it. There's no shorthand. Anytime it's an or sentence, you must see the word or. You can't confuse it. It always says or if it's an or sentence. So let's start solving the blue one. Add 5 to both sides. Negative 2x is greater than or equal to 3. 
We're going to divide by negative 2. So that means when we're changing the sign, we need to change the sign. Multiplying or dividing an inequality by a negative changes the direction of the inequality. So it's no longer greater than or equal to. It's less than or equal to. So x is less than or equal to negative 3 halves. Let's work on the red inequality. Add 3. Whew, that was tough. We're done. x is greater than 5. It's an or sentence. We can't miss it. But sometimes, graphing or sentences can be tricky. But my actual answer itself is fairly simple. x is less than or equal to negative 3 halves. Sure, you can call it negative 1 and a half. Or x is greater than 5. Let's be careful when we graph it. When we graph it, I need to put a point where negative 3 halves is. I want a solid closed circle because there is an equal and we want everything to the left because that's where we find smaller numbers x is less than or equal to negative three halves quite often I will graph this separately but in my mind I could picture this one so that's why I'm graphing it all at the same time and here open circle around positive five because we don't include it there's no equal sign and everything to the right now it is not always the case with an or sentence that you will have two points and then your number line is going in opposite directions. It is not always that way. Sometimes it happens that way. Many times it happens that way. But when we look at Tuesday's lesson, our next lesson, we'll see that it doesn't always happen that way. So that's our look at compound inequalities. It's very important you understand compound inequalities because our next lesson, we're going to do a little bit more. We're going to take compound inequalities a little bit further. So it's really important that you get a good grasp on them in this lesson.